afternoon. Good morning. Uh, thank you to everybody being here. Appreciate you guys always covering us and all the stories you write. And, um, we'll open up for questions right away. Sorry, I'm about a minute and a half late, so we'll get moving. PJ, in watching Gopher football offensive lines over the years, this is one of the best that I've seen. Can you talk a little bit about how good it is and also from a chemistry standpoint, how these guys feel about each other and off the field and, and working with each other? Yeah, I think when, especially when you're in the Big Ten, I think you win games up front. I think uh, that that has that has stayed true, uh, tried and true throughout the years, even back when I was a kid. Just you always knew about you know you had to be able to run the ball, you had to be able to have big offensive linemen that could move, athletic, and I think that was the biggest difference. You know, when I played in the MAC, and you kind of looked at Big Ten lines are always bigger and stronger, and you know we have a pretty big offensive line, but just because you're big doesn't make you good. You know, um, these guys have played together for a very long period of time. And the camaraderie with them is, is incredibly close. It's a tight-knit group. Um, there's guys who played a lot of football. And it's not just playing football. It's the experiences they've gone through together. Um, they've won together. They've lost together. Had close defeats, close wins. Um, they've all battled through certain things personally. Not only that, injuries. Um, this is a really tight-knit group that, that made choices to come back, a lot of them. Um, and, you know, the one thing about us is, you know, we're, you know, we do what we can do. We don't just sit there and put the square peg into the round hole. We have a system, and they've, they've done a great job of developing within the system. Not only that, we've developed our system to our strength, which is our offensive line. And I think some people, when you talk about you know, who are your best players, you, know, you start rattling off the skill positions offensively, defensively, quarterback, things like that. But I've told our football team, to begin, some of our best players are our offensive linemen. And you've got to build around your best players. And we've done everything we possibly can to do that. Unfortunately, with some of the skill positions, we've had a lot of injuries this year, which is you, know, you always wonder what that would look like with some of those guys in there. Um, and I think people got a chance to see a little bit of that, maybe for one half. Um, but they just continue to, to, to work together on and off the field. They're incredibly close to hang out with each other off the field. And I think they're setting an example and a precedent of what it means to be an offensive lineman here at the University of Minnesota. It's well documented. We haven't had an offensive lineman drafted in 15 years, and that's well documented. I've said I've said that. That's not like, oops, you know. Oh, now we're not going to be able to get an offensive lineman. Uh, that's all going to change this year. And when I got when I got here, we said that we were going to change a lot of the thoughts, perceptions, and ideas of what people have uh, about our program, about the University of Minnesota, and and break some of those things that have not happened in a long period of time. Whether that's beating a certain opponent or winning a certain amount of games or getting people drafted, right? And it's pretty easy when you're recruiting against us to talk about, well, they haven't had an offensive line draft. Why would you want to go there? Well, we're, again, it takes time. It takes a, that's a cultural sustainability. It takes a while for that to happen because we did it with high school kids and develop them, and it takes four or five years to get them to where they are now, and we're going to have a lot of guys drafted hopefully this year and then in years to come. So it's, a, it's another one you check off as sitting there go, okay, we've done that. What else do we have to keep? fixing and, and, and make better and developing. So long answer to your short question, really good question, because they deserve a lot of credit. They're, they're a really good unit uh, and, and incredible people. Take football aside. I mean, these are, these, are, these are young men. Can't call them kids anymore. I mean, they're grown. I mean, when I, when I dismiss them for, for meals, right, I can't say seniors and juniors and sophomores and freshmen. And usually I don't – that's the only time I ever sit there and we, we categorize our team by how old you are is when we eat. But usually a special team eats before any of them anyway. But now i got to say, okay, anybody, you know, 24 and older, and then like 20 guys stand up and go, go eat. I'm like, my goodness. And uh, then you go all the way down to 17 years old. So, I mean, we have, we have uh, a wide spectrum of ages on this team. But uh, they're incredible people. They're going to be doctors. They're going to be actuaries. There's going, there's going to be lawyers. They're going to be teachers. I mean, they're going to be incredible husbands and fathers. And it's a, it's a really fun group. And hopefully they've done something here that they can be really proud of as we keep going forward um, that can, again, set the tone for the, for the future of our offensive line of, of what we're, we're building. And you got a chance to see some of that even in, in Northwestern, the guys behind them, right? And, um, you know, I know they're, they're chomping at the bit to be able to play as well. PJ, do you have a, an injury update on Bryce Williams and his availability this week? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, Bryce will not be available this week. Um, unfortunately, uh, he did get hurt. Um, looks like it will be season ending. Uh, so it's unfortunate. It just, it's one of those years that uh, that's kind of that's got us right now. 
And uh, but it's it's the next man in, next man up, and everybody everybody's on deck. I told the entire team, I said, listen, if any of you ever carried a ball, right, in any part of your career, if you have a picture with a button from the YMCA league with a ball in it in your hand, and you're chinning it properly, you are going to be available possibly to run the football for us this year. So we're going in, talking to their parents, and talking to their aunt and uncles, and seeing if they ever did that. Diving into some Pop Warner film. So, in all seriousness, are you, are you going to be moving anyone else over? This yes. Week? Okay. Yes, we will. Who? I'm not going to tell you that. So, but yes, we will be. Over the past three games, we are, already have. Right. Um, which you got a chance to see one of them. We did. Uh, two weeks ago with another just plan. This wasn't like, oh, it just happened. Who can do this? This has been a contingency plan uh, for four or five weeks now. So I'm, I'm proud of our guys for you know developing. And Sundays is a lot of that work that we do with them uh, to get them ready for that position because they're all playing different positions as well. Over the past three games, your offense is one of the best early down efficiencies. <clears throat> what do you think has sparked that success? Well, I think Mike and Matt are doing a really good job. Of, of And again, this is I don't think people know how hard it really is when it's a revolving door of playmakers constantly and there's lack of consistency. And, you know, even Mike last year, the lack of consistency with COVID-19. And then this year, they say, okay, we, and then the first half against Ohio State, now we're inconsistent with playmakers all of a sudden, right? And it's just, it's been that year. Uh, I think they've done a really good job uh, of really breaking it all down to what are we really good at? What's our bread and butter? Who are the playmakers that are going to be available this week? And how can we find a way efficiently to get them the ball and win on first and second down? And I think we've done an okay job at that. Uh, we got to be way better and we got to continue to grow. But I think that's when your first and second down efficiencies are really good. It sets up some third and shorts, which uh, the game at Northwestern saw. We, we saw a lot of that, which is very advantageous to, to what we do. So, um, you know, and getting, I think, Tanner comfortable early. Um, I think any quarterback wants that, not just Tanner. And so I think we've – those still, Matt and, and Mike have done a great job, as well as our offensive staff, of, of bringing that all together and finding out information of, you know, who's been consistent doing what. Because some of these guys have played for the first time and they get thrown into roles and you don't even know what they can technically do in a game yet. Doing something in practice is definitely different than doing it in a game and having that game experience. But – um, a lot of guys are being called upon um, to step in, step up as a team for each other, and uh, that's you know that's why you know we were one and zero last week because they did it for each other, and it's a very selfless team. It doesn't mean we're perfect; it just means we're you know the, the guys really care about each other and the team more than they truly care about themselves, and uh, I think that's really important as you keep going through November. PJ, uh, it sounds like you guys have focused more on on the run game at practice this year versus previous year, why did you decide to put more of an emphasis on that this year? Put more uh, in the run game? Yeah. Are you talking about in games or practice? In, in practice, like inside run drills, that kind of thing. We've done that uh, really since we've been here. Um, we have different names for them, but we've really done a lot of the running. You know, we're, we're, we, I mean, we've done that for nine years um, in, in terms of, you know, running the football in practice and um, – so I guess I, I guess it really hasn't hasn't changed as much from my perspective. Maybe from when you when you watch practice, it might look different here and there, but that could be we're moving periods around, calling it different things. Um, but there has been an emphasis of doing what we do better, right? And I think uh, from every standpoint, offensively, defensively, and special teams. What are your early impressions of Illinois? You know, this is a team that, I mean, a few weeks ago, I mean, they go in and, and to Happy Valley and, and, and beat a really good Penn State team. I mean, they're a really good football team. I mean, when you look back at, you know, um, you know where Lovey recruited and, and, and the depth they have and the experience they have, there's a lot of older guys on that team, and they have a lot of depth. I mean, even with, you know, Hanson being out, and all of a sudden, boom, there's another linebacker in there um, that looks really good. And their defensive line, they're playing a ton of guys at defensive line, which means you have a lot of depth, which really helps your football team. And, uh, you know, Brett wants to be able to run the football. He always has, always wanted to. Uh, and, oh, you know, he's going to do the same thing in Illinois. And they get in that barge formation with a lot of linemen, and they're going to run the football. And, and Peters is, is, is playing consistent and throwing to open guys and getting completions and, and moving them down the field. So, um, you know, again, it's still early in the, in the film development um, and the game plan, but got a lot of respect for Brett and what he's been able to do in this league. 
and as a head coach. A uh, ton of respect and admiration for him and how he does it. Um, and Illinois has got a lot of experienced guys, a lot of guys who have played a ton of football, especially up front. I mean, one of their biggest strengths on their offense is their offensive line. I mean, they're really good. they got a lot of guys who have played a ton of football. Uh, and defensively, they fly around. I mean, I think they have one of the best safeties in the league. And he, he's active. He's like a linebacker. He's like a blitzing uh, he's a blitzing linebacker. He's a safety. He's a corner. He's a, I mean, you put him at, you know, four eye and he can go in there and do, I mean, he's just, he's one of the better players in our league and he can fly around, and make plays anywhere. So, um, you know, and special teams guys, it seems like they've been there forever. The specialists have been there forever. I mean, um, so they've got a lot of experience and they've won a lot of close games, won some big games. So we've got to uh, be at our best for sure. Did you, did you guys ever, um, I don't know if take a break is the right word, but with your the one game championship season sort of philosophy, do you ever take a step back at the big picture and talk to the guys about the West Division race? No, the there, there's I think there's two times that you talk about big picture, and that's one preseason, right, and then two bye week, because the big picture is more of reflecting on what you've done, right, and where you're headed and what's left, and it's a it's a little bit of a recharge, and it's a good time to do that. Take a deep breath. Where are you now? Up and those are the only two times I've ever we've ever done that. Everything else is a one game championship season. Um, we we don't mention what's ahead of us. We don't mention a race. Uh, we talk about external versus internal, and all that other stuff is external. Every single thing, uh, respectively, you said is all external. We we had time during the bye week to talk about that. We had time in the preseason to talk about expectations of what we wanted to do, and then you just put your head down and you just row, and that's what we've been doing, and. Uh, you know, the whole main goal of this whole thing is, is uh, you know, one and no championship season against Illinois. That's the only thing this team's focusing on, and that's the only thing we'll let them. Um, you know, it's human nature to look at external, but we continue to fight it every day. This is about fighting human nature the best you possibly can, and that internal has got to be way l louder than the external. Justin Wally's snap counts continue to rise. How much growth has he shown as he's – more game I tell you what, you know, we, we've got some corners that have all played a lot of football. And I think Justin played a lot more last week um, in, in all deserving reps. T Times played a ton of football for us. Philip Howers played a lot of football for us. Cody Durs played a lot of football for us. We need those guys. We need all four of them. Sometimes, you know, Wally's going to get more reps than, than T Times. Sometimes T Times is going to get more reps than Wally. Uh, that's just the way it is. They're all really good players. But we have to be able to keep rotations going. And when somebody's playing really well, you got to be able to keep letting let them keep playing well, right? Uh, but I think you know that Wally's going to be a really good football player. I mean, T time has gotten so much better from where he was last year to where he is now, uh, and that team that that unit just got to keep coming together, keep being selfless because they have been this entire time. Keep playing for each other. Don't worry about who's getting the credit, right? And and there might be some times you don't play a lot. I mean, we had we had guys last week, two weeks ago, and they weren't complaining. But they were upset. They were sad. It's like, well, why are you sad? Right? They had the feeling of, we're sad. It's like, well, why are you sad? We only played 40 snaps. The whole team, we only had 40 snaps on defense. I mean, there's nothing. You can go back out after the game, and we'll take you through a practice if compliance allows, to get the extra 30 reps. I have no problem doing a team period. Right? We can get the, you know, bring the scout team out there, right? Get the rofers out there and – 30 rep, we can do that if you like. They're like, well, well that doesn't make any sense. I said, then, in, then it's good for us to only have 40 because there's going to be times where we have to have 90. But that's what I love about this team. They want to play. They want to play. And when there's only 40 defensive snaps, or, they were sad. They weren't mad. They, they weren't mad and pouty or anything. They were just sad like, Coach, I, we only played 40 snaps. Then you divide it in two because you, you know, your D-line's rotating. Some guys only played 20 snaps in the game. They got more than that in two periods in practice. But that's part of this. They, they all want to play, and they all want to be out there. I think that's, that's why, I, again, I'm, I'm just always giving you reasons of why this team's really fun to coach, you know, because they want to be on the field and play. Whatever the records are going to be, I said that, you know, weeks ago. Um, they're just fun to coach, and th those are the teams you really, really enjoy, you know, the, the ones that want to get better. You coach, you teach. Um, it's fun to have them, you know, to, to think like that. I've never seen. I've never really seen that. You know, they're sad. I'm like, why? You, first of all, you want to get mad as a coach. Like, why you said we just won. We're a team, you know. And uh, they're like, no, coach, we just wanted to play more. Like, all right, I get it. But then once you tell them, let's go back out there. They're like, oh no, we're good. So. Why don't you more of a coach? 
With your offensive line, do you think that they're playing their best football of the season right now going into November? And if you do think that, how nice is that with now it's time to see where this team stacks? Well, well, I think the, the biggest part of this is we always talk about the price always goes up each week. And I think the hardest thing about human nature is we all want to be comfortable. We all want to celebrate what we just did. And, you know, is, is, this is good enough. And that's human nature, right? Um, we fight human nature every day of finding a way to change your best. Whatever is good enough today, right, won't be good enough tomorrow. We celebrate and draw a line in the sand of, okay, that's why we celebrate the way we do in the locker room. You know, everybody, you know, when, when we get a lot of coverage, everybody's like, well, look at the locker room celebration. We've done that for nine years. And I've said all along, when you're 0-10, 0-9, like when you win a football game, you never take winning for granted ever again, right? So we're going to celebrate to end that moment. Like, all that work into that week, there's going to be a line that's drawn. No matter how we win, we won. We'll talk about how we won on Sunday, but we're going to draw a line in the sand. So that one week can come to a close. Same thing day to day. Our offensive line is good. We know that. But what we did against Northwestern will not be good enough against Illinois. But it's human nature to sit there and say, okay, uh, you know, we're, we're really good. Maybe, you know, I mean, what if, what if we don't get any better? I mean, that's human nature. Our guys will never think that way because the price always goes up if you want to be a champion one day. The price always goes up. It never stays the same, and it never goes down. That price always goes up. So we're constantly reminding of them, uh, reminding them that, finding cultural ways to teach that lifetime lesson. But also – you can get in the, the a lot of successful teams, successful people get into a certain you know rut where oh nothing's ever good enough for that person, right? But as long as what you're saying is nothing's ever good enough for that person, but you're celebrating those moments along the way, then you can have that balance, right? Of saying okay, whatever we did last week's not good enough, we got to be better, right? But if you're if you're not celebrating those moments, it'll all run together, and then what's it all what's it all for? You know, and so for us, we have to find a way to continue to change our best. The price always goes up. They're a very mature group. They played in a lot of football games. They've lost a lot of football games. They've won a lot of football games. They've dominated games. They've also been dominated. So they've they've they have a ton of past to really embrace to create their future. Um, time we touched the stove and kept touching the stove. Times we haven't. So I mean, there's all that education sitting there and they've got to continue to apply it and use it. Not only that, pass it down to the next generations of how to be able to do that. So it's a tough challenge because you, again, you're fighting human nature, not fighting go for lineman nature. You're fighting human nature, right? Of being able to be comfortable. And uh, we will never do that. You know, we will never do that. So final one for coach. coach you, what's you've the... got a lot of, uh, you know, like we've all talked about uh, a lot of, Mature guys, uh, senior guys, super senior guys. Do you have a pretty good idea right now as to how many of those guys will choose to come back? I have a good – there's categories. There's the idea – the good idea of guys coming back. There's, there's the idea of, of I have no idea. And then the guys that I'm really sure won't come back. So and, – and I couldn't tell you who's in what group. But already you're able to strategize your that a little yeah, bit into we, your, we going. No, you're okay. Go ahead. Into your recruiting, strategize into your recruiting. Well, that makes it really difficult. I think everybody's dealing with that right now, especially with the numbers coming up, right, being able to do that. But you don't know who's leaving your roster, who's not. There's always going to be surprises, right, no matter one way or another, right? You've got to be ready for that and be able to take that in stride. And then there's going to be pretty consistent. That's why our recruiting numbers high school-wise I feel really good about right now. And that's why we're, we're being really patient um, to see what happens with our football team. But I have a good idea, uh, but I don't know which ones are going to stay and go. And I've had conversations over and over and over, but healthy conversations. Um, not like you have to do this. I'll never tell a young man what to do. Uh, we'll give them all the facts. We'll give them all the things that they, they can have. And then from there, they've got to be able to make that decision one way or another and, and, uh, and move on with their decisions. All right. Thank you. Appreciate everybody. Roll the boat. Sky Mago Gophers. Thank you.